ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੁਣ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਮਾਨਯੋਗ ਵੀਰ ਗੁਰਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਨ ਇਹ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਨੇ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਰੂਪ ਇੱਕ ਸਿੱਖ ਵਾਲਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਤਿਗੁਰਾਂ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਜੋ ਭਾਵਨਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਭਾਵਨਾ ਹੀ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਤਹਿਤ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸੰਨ 2001 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੱਛਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਜੋ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਥੀਸਿਸ ਜੋ ਛਪਿਆ ਜੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਐਮਏ ਦੀ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਚੁਣਿਆ ਉਹ ਦਸਮ ਦੀ ਬਾਣੀ ਤੇ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਵੱਡੇ ਭਾਗ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਤਿਗੁਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਬਾਣੀ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਇਤਨੀ ਸ਼ਰਧਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਹੈ ਸਤਿਗੁਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿ ਜੋ ਇਹ ਭਾਵਨਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਰੂਪ ਉੱਤੇ ਵੀ ਰੰਗ ਲਿਆਏਗੀ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਸਮੂਹ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਸੰਗਤ ਇਹ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਕਰੇ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਮਾਨਯੋਗ ਵੀਰ ਗੁਰਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਨ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੇ ਆਉਣ ਜੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਵਿਸ਼ਾ ਹੈ ਦਸਵੇਂ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਦਾ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲ ਜਰਨੀ ਥਰੂ ਆਰਟੀਫੈਕਟਸ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਾਂ ਚ ਦੇ ਦਿਆਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇਸ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ 18ਵੀਂ ਸਦੀ ਦੇ ਆਰੰਭ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਪਚਿੱਤਰ ਨਾਟਕ ਦੇ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਅਨੁਵਾਦ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਲਿਆਉਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਜੋ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ ਸਕਾਲਰ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਲਿਖਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲਿਆਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਾਸ ਬਹੁਤ ਖਜ਼ਾਨਾ ਹੈ ਤਸਵੀਰਾਂ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਹੋਣ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਭਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਸਮਤ ਬਖਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਗਿਆਨ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਧਾਰ ਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਤੇ ਸੁਚੱਜਾ ਇੱਕ ਸਮਾਜ ਸਿਰ ਸਕੀਏ ਦਾਸ ਪਾਸੋਂ ਬੇਨਤੀਆਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਆਂ ਬੇਨਤ ਭੁੱਲਾਂ ਜੋ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਖਿਮਾ ਦੀ ਜਾਚਨਾ ਹੈ ਫਤਿਹ ਪ੍ਰਵਾਨ ਕਰਨੀ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਤਾਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਮੈਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਸਨ ਹੋਜ਼ੇ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਹਫਤਾ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਕਾਫੀ ਚੰਗਾ ਰਿਸੀਵ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਧਰ ਤਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਮੱਜ ਉਹੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਰਿਪੀਟ ਕਰਨ ਆਇਆ ਉਦਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈਗਾ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਕਿਸਨੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਲਿਖੋ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਦੇਖੋ ਫਿਰ ਗੱਲ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਹ ਹੈਗਾ ਮੈਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕਰਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ 15 ਸਾਲ ਉਦਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਹੁਣ ਐਮਏ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਦੇਖਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਦੇ ਬਾਣੀਆਂ ਕਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਬੰਦੀਆਂ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਦੀਆਂ ਬਾਣ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਦਾਸ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਬਾਣੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਾਂ ਫੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਵਿਰਾਸ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਆ ਉਹਦੇ ਪਾਸ਼ੇ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਸੀ ਪੜਾਈ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਹੁਣ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁਣ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ Guru Granth Sahib is the primal scripture of the Sikhs. Sri Dasam Granth Sahib is also known as Dasam Pashaka Granth and is considered the scripture of the 10th king. Sri Dasam Granth Sahib is also known as a secondary scripture because Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj is our primal scripture. Compositions from both scriptures
Gatka, Shastra Vidya, because some of the Banis which are derived from Dasam Granth Sahib, like Jab Sahib, Shastra Namala, and s certain other portions, help the Gatka pr practitioner in achieving the balance of Miri Bedi. Most importantly, it's imp it serves to understand what is the name of the Granth. Sometimes people say Dasam Granth, and Dasam Granth is a name which people commonly use now. However, if you look at past Itihas and history, we find something different. In the Anandapuri Bead of 1695 1696, the name given in the Tatkara or the contents page is Bani Sri Mukhwak Bashai Das. Now that's very interesting because some people consider Dasam Granth Sahib not to be Bani, but yet in one of the original manuscripts or sroops of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib, it's referred to as Bani. In another sroop, known as the Patna Sahib 1698 sroop, the name given is Bashai. That's when Juka Grant. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the name always given was Sri Mukhwa Pashai Dasmi or, or Dasvi. And again, that's when Pashaka Grant continued in books and Sekhatiyas throughout history. Essentially, if we translate it in English, it means the grant of Guru Gobind Singh. It's always been known as the grant of Guru Gobind Singh. There is other name that cannot be given to it. The compositions or the Bani which is in Sri Dasam Granth Sahib is numerous. It differs from Guru Granth Sahib in some respects. We see compositions like Jab Sahib, Akal Ustad, Chandi Chiritras, Jovi Saftar, Shasta Namala, Jatha Pakyan. Some of the Banis serve, as I said earlier on, as part of the Amrit process. Others serve another important process in understanding the theology of the Khalsa. Terms like Deg Deg Fate, Khanda, all derived from Sita Simran Sahib. The Angs follow a similar process to Guru Granth Sahib. The language is broad, primarily Braj Pasha. Braj Pasha was also the, the language in which Bhaigurdas Vaz, sorry, Bhaigurdas Kabits were written, Guru Teg Bihaz's Bani. And the compositions were written in locations like Anandpur Sahib, Ponta Sahib, and most importantly, Burbur Sahib as well. When some people talk about Sri Dasam Granth Sahib, they try to say that there's no early manuscripts. They try to say there's no history. They try to say there's nothing which can draw or which can actually state that Guru Gobind Singh wrote Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. That is a complete lie. By looking at early manuscripts to begin with, we can actually see where the process of the actual compilation derives from. Within these manuscripts are also what we call Khas Patre. Khas Patre are known as the Panne of Guru Gobind Singh in his own hand, which means he wrote some Panne which we still have today. I mentioned the Anandpuri bead, which serves as one of the first original manuscripts or Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. Again, like I said, it was dates, two dates within it are 1695 and 1696. Within that manuscript is the Likhat of Guru Gobind Singh within it. This also includes Jitra Pakyan. The codes that was done by Piyara Singh Padam confirms this as well. Another bead which people refer to as the Pai Mani Singh bead. And that was written sometime afterwards. 
and this be combined the compositions of both Guru Granth Sahib and Sri Dasam Granth Sahib as well. And in Sikh Atiyas, it's mentioned several times. Within this bead, the compositions of Krishna Avtar in the Guru's, Guru Maharaj's handwriting is also contained within it. There is other beads as well, including the Patna Sahib beads, one dated 1698, and another one which is an ident- identical copy of it, but without a summat in it. Sometime afterwards, Mahapuraks like Baba Deep Singh, Jeet Singh, based at Damdama Sahib, also made copies as well. The early beads confirm that the compositions of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib were written by Guru Gobind Singh. The Anandpuri bead, which I alluded to earlier, serves as a working progress bead and cannot be considered as the definitive manuscript of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. This picture in front of you is from the Pai Mani Singh bead and on the left hand side is a Kaas Patra of Guru Gobind Singh. The style, the handwriting of Guruji is not mistaken for anyone else's. Before the manuscripts were created, there was certain little potis that Guru Sahib also made. Recently, I've done a bit of research on some of these potis. Some were kept in private collections in India. For instance, the Sordi family, they had a manuscript of Jopi Sahib with the verses of Guru Tegh Bahadur, but unfortunately this was stolen in 2003. Other Dasam Potis are with the Anandpur families of Suraj Malat and Anandpur Sahib. There's handwritten pages of Kalki Avtar in Kela Mubarak and in my forthcoming book, the Granth of Guru Gobind Singh, Essays, Lectures and Translations. There is also certain information on other potis with Panne of Guru Gobind Singh. This is some photographs of what the Anandpur potis look like. Now the style of writing, the handwriting of Guru Gobind Singh, like I said, cannot be confused with anyone else's. The style of Guru Gobind Singh's writing, similar to Guru Tegh Bahadur's, was what we call, there's certain descriptions of that handwriting. Some people call it Anandpur Lippi, some call it Kaat Lippi. It had a different style, and there was no one else who could copy it at the time. Whilst we know Pai Mani Singh and Baba Deep Singh are known in Sikh Atiyas and Sikh history as compilers of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. I want to mention and discuss two other names which have not had the recognition they receive in actually the discussion of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. This includes Pai Hardas and Pai Shia Singh. We'll start with Pai Hardas. He was the actual grandfather of Jasa Singh Ram Gariya. He fought battles alongside the Guru and Banda Bahadur. And most importantly, he prepared a recension or bead of Guru Granth Sahib, dated 1682, a very early bead which had the verses of Guru Tegh Bahadur in it. This was completed at Anandpur Sahib. It was kept at Sikh Reference Library. Unfortunately, in the Hamala in 1984, this manuscript was destroyed together with a lot of other Pratan Bira as well. But importantly, within the Hatlikt, it had the name or the description, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Lakari, Pai Haridas Wali Bid, confirming that Pai Haridas was a Lakari of Guru Gobind Singh. This manuscript also had a Nishan of Guru Gobind Singh within the manuscript as well. So like I said, he was a Lakari within the Dabar of the 10th Guru. But Bhai Hardas was also 
involved in the preparation of Guru Granth Sahib Portis, and now we can also state in the preparation of Anandpuri bead as well. His name appears in the first manuscript of Dasam Granth, together with names like the Baris, the Baris, the Bari Singh, the Bari Singh Shota, Nahala, and Bala. The important thing about this is the manuscripts which were created were created under the supervision of Guru Gobind Singh. That's why you have Lakaris like Pai Hardas involved in the preparation of Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj and Sri Dasam Granth Sahib as well. Just some further information on the Anantapuri bead. Like I mentioned, it has the Kaspatre of Guru Gobind Singh. It also contains two pictures which are said to be of Guru Gobind Singh. One of these is featured in my book, Sri Dasam Granth Sahib, Questions and Answers. And also, this bead shows the editing process by the Guru. The second Lakari, which also deserves mention and credit, is by Shia Singh. His name, again, like I said, men is mentioned in Sikh history, but seldomly actually used when it comes to the understanding of Sri Dasam Ran Sahib. He was based in Delhi, together with the queens of the Khalsa, Mata Sundari and Mata Seb Divan. The bar in Delhi became an important center where Jasa Singh Alwalia by Nandalal Sal also visited this location. But in the problems that were created in the Punjab, the Matas were also crucial in propagating Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. Bai Shia Singh, based in Delhi, was also working with Bai Muni Singh to try and establish and find some of the caste patre which had been lost. According to the historic letter sent from Bai Muni Singh to Mata Sundari, he was searching for these handwritten panne. The letter dated 1716 alludes to the search of these missing bhotis and is corroborated by Bansavli Nama in 1769, Keshar Singh's Chibar, which also gives Shia Singh's name in the compilation and the search for the Bhotis. It should be said that Shia Singh's contribution can be confirmed by the manuscript Sangur, Sangrur Bir, which is also or was a comp compilation of Sri Guru Granth Sahib and Dasam Granth Sahib. And that's according to Dr. Ashta, who did a very important work called the Poetry of the Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. Another aspect, another important aspect which should be known is when manuscripts and recensions of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib were created, they were sent to all parts of India and further afield. This included Afghanistan, and one manuscript dated 1712 was sent according to Dr. Gandhar Singh and the research PhD scholar Gamarup Singh as well. If anyone goes to Gudwara Mata Sundari in Delhi and speaks to the Sevadars at the Gudwara, and they can see the boards there as well confirming Shia Singh's involvement in Dasam Granth Sahib recensions. Whilst I've mentioned a certain number of manuscripts, I thought I'd also allude to one known as the Aurangabad bead. This is also considered an early Sri Dasam Granth Sahib recension. It's attributed to Bhai Tia Singh, one of the Panj Piyare. He was based there to deliver the historic Zafarnama to Aurangzeb. This manuscript is still kept at the Gurdwara by Deya Singh and, can, and people can do the darshan of the manuscript there as well. And like I said, once manuscripts were created, they were sent to all different parts of India. 
That's why there's early suroops in Patna Sahib, Hajur Sahib, all different parts. And every year you always find, we are finding new Hathlikta with early Samats confirming the popularity, confirming the Atiyas within Sri Dasam Granth at an early stage of the Khalsa. <coughs> this Panna here is from the Aurangabad bead in Persian of Zafarnama. In many Prane or Pratan Hathlik Srups, when it came to the Zafarnama, that was actually written in Persian as opposed to Gurmukhi or any other language. In the compilation or the creation of the grant, we hear of the names of Anand Prasab, Porta Saab, in Sikhathyas, these locations are very well known. There's Rachana of the Kavis, which also mention Anantpur and Porta. However, it should also be known that at Babur Saab is a third location we can also add to the creation of Siddhartha Ran Saab. And it's at this location where Chopi Saab was completed. Now, interestingly, Jopi Saab forms the end portion of Chitrapakyan. So essentially, Chitrapakyan was also completed with the addition of Jopi Saab at this location. And Guru Gobind Singh actually writes, it was completed in 1696 on the banks of the river Sutlaj. And if anyone goes there to the Gurdwara to do darshan, they can see this historic location and see the beauty on the banks of the river Sutlej where Guru Sahib wrote Jopi Sahib. Now one interesting concept or idea which is always brought up is the Prakash of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. Retaname, Sikh Ithyas, Sikh history, early Sikh history, refer to Guru Gobind Singh, refer to Sikh Khalsa doing the Prakash of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. And it should be remembered that Dasam Granth Sahib is not Prakash on its own. It's always in the Hazuri of Sri Guru Granth Sahib. There is no such thing as doing Prakash of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib on its own. By this asking, in his Retanama states, the Bani from both Granths should be remembered, should be memorized, Whatever is given to the Dasam and Ard Guru, both are said to be first and equal. Now at that time, the grants were kept together in Prakash. Things have changed since that time. Takht Sabs, Patna Sab, Hajur Sab, Keshkar Sab, and even Sri Akal Takht Sab has in the past had some Mariyadda related to Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. It should however be noted in this particular period now, most Gurdwari do not have Sri Dasam Granth Sahib placed within them. Over the last hundred years, over the Singh Sabha period, over the time of the Pachorya, and also the post-1984 post period, it is safe to say the debate Shankar on Sri Dasam Granth Sahib is a modern debate. Whenever they say they have seen some kind of parchi, letter, book saying that there's been a debate, it cannot be proved and it won't be proved because there never was any debate. Importantly, like I said, at the Takht Sabs, the, the Mariyadda of Dasam Granth Sahib, but also some of the Gudwari around them as well. So if we consider Sri Akal Takht Sahib, Gudwar Ramsar, Akali Fula Singh Burj, had Prakash, and Akali Fula Singh Burj to this day still has Prakash of both Granths, and the Soda Committee report 
refers to the importance of both Granth and Prakash at the time of its writing. If we go to Takht Huyur Sahib, again, apart from the main Gudwara, Maipago, Gudwara, all Sahib Prakash are both Granths. And relatively, the more we look, the more we see, it's more common than uncommon. There is a very important painting created by a Hungarian painter called Shoft. This isn't the picture, but he actually creates a beautiful picture with Maharaja Ranjit Singh, with both grunts in Prakash. But I wanted to show you something different. This engraving during the British period again shows not too far from the Akal Takht where both grants were in Prakash. Again, this is only a depiction. Earlier on, I mentioned about Gudwar Ramsar, a very important Gudwara in the compilation creation of Guru Granth Sahib. But interestingly, this fresco, which was at Guru Dwara Ramsar, again, on the walls it shows the Prakash of both grants. I want to move on to Sikh relics and how Dasambani has been promoted not just by manuscripts but how the Atyas has been transmitted on Atyar as well and swords. Other religions like Christianity and also the Muslims they have also had inscriptions on their material items as well. In modern times, when it comes to the research of history, the relics, the swords, and other material items are often neglected. One important relic related to Guru Gobind Singh is known as a Jerena. Jerena in Persian means four mirrors. Essentially, it is a breastplate which Guru Sahib wore in battle and it was the same one he wore in the battle of Bagani Sahib and in the Yud there was a piercing of an arrow the piercing which can still be seen on the armour itself the armour and its four plates contains Bani from both grants including Japji Sahib Jab Sahib Akal Ustad and also Shaskitri Salok This is the actual plate which is kept in the house of Patiala, captain of Marinda Singh's residence, and is so important in understanding not just the Atyas on Sri Dasam Grand Sahib, but the Atyas on Sikh history. I want you to move on to the Adas and the importance and how the importance has been recognized in Atyas as well. As we know, the Adas is recited at various times in the Gurdwara and on various ceremonies. But also, the first portions derive from Chandi Divar, which is from Sri Dasagran Sahib. And an important relic has also surfaced, which has been noted in Sikh Atiyas, but many people don't know about, is a copper plate. This particular copper plate is very important on several bases. It confirms that Sikh history was created and also transmitted on copper plates. These plates which can be found are actually at Hindu temples and not Sikh Gurdwara. The importance seems to be that Guru Maharaj wanted to promote Sikh Dharma across all religions. We refer to this copper plate as a Tamar Patra. And Guru Gobind Singh, when he went to Kapil Mochan, he bestowed this 
historic plate at this location. He also gave a hukunnama to the Pajaris there as well. But most importantly, the Ardas or portions of the Ardas are inscribed on this particular plate. Like I said, the plate is located at Kapu Mochan in Haryana. The date bears given as 1679, sorry, 1679. And the Hukum Nama states that it was bestowed to Javala Das at that time. It goes on to state that any of his Sikhs who follow the Hukum will be blessed. And the hukum as recorded is the ardas. The importance and significance of the ardas can now be seen by this plate by showing how importance was given by the Guru at this time. Critics who put Shanka on terms like Bhagoti, like Teja Singh Bachoria in the 1920s, Ragi Dashan, most recently have disputed the term Bhagoti but evidence from this copper plate shows how important the Ardas was from an early period as stated before. I wanted to move on to Guru's swords, the inscriptions on the swords and how Das and Bani has been promoted or extended onto swords as well. But it's not just Das and Bani, it's also the concepts and ideals of Guru Granth Sahib as well. The sword for Guru Gobind Singh was the embodiment of a Kaal Purk. The Shastras for the Khalsa are as important as Gurbani. Never make the mistake of thinking the Shastras of the Sikhs of the Khalsa does not hold any importance. In Sikh Atiyas, the Shastras are seen as equally as important as Gurbani. As I just mentioned, the Manglacharan or invocation Sri Bhagoti Ji Sahai, which is recorded on Chandi Divar and the copper plate, means, let's just define it for a certain period now. It means the divine sword protects and represents the shakti or power of a kal purk to crush the evildoers. It's very, very important what it means. The sword for the Khalsa is a sword of justice, truth, and all prevailing power of all divine powers and virtues. The term Bhagoti also pay, appears in Bhagardas Vara and is also referred to as a sword. This inscription on this particular sword in Patiala, the inscription says Bhagoti Sahai. Again, pointing to the importance of the actual terms used within Sri Dasan Granth Sahib and then transmitted on to manuscripts and then also relics. One other important sword belongs to Sham Singh Atari Valia, the majestic Singh, Khalsa Badwan, who during the Anglo-Sikh war period did enough Gurbani and bravery. This sword contains the inscriptions of Shasta Namala on this particular sword and is kept with his descendants. I want to move on to the British period. Now, essentially, during the British period, they had different kind of savar, they had different kind of descriptions. The early descriptions of the Khalsa and of Dasam Granth Sahib were generally positive. There's, I've catalogued over 50 different commentaries from the British related to the Granths. One of the earliest is Charles Wilkins in 1788, which is a, looking at the Atiyas at Takht Patna Sahib. I 
I want to briefly talk about Dr. Leyden. Dr. Leyden was based in Scotland. He moved to Calcutta. He knew Pasha. The number of Pasha languages he knew was over 30. And essentially, he translated some of the works of Bhai Mani Singh, Bhai Gurdas II, an early description and translation of Brahim Samara Grant as well. These are all located in the British Library. These are now available, some of these are available online and were brought out in the public by Bob Punjab Culture Association in 2011. I just briefly want to talk about the Brahim Samara Grant. One of the manuscripts which is created by Dr. Leyden, dated 1808, so just look at the summit, 1808, same time period of by um, Akali Fula Singh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's period, but this Gora, Britisher, translated Sikh manuscripts into English at this time. The Prem de Samara Granth translation was discovered by myself in 2006 and is important because at the time there was Shankar created by Western scholars including W.H. MacLeod who was dating some manuscripts and dif different atyas at different times. The discovery of this manuscript led him to actually reevaluate and redate the manuscript. This is the open folio, opening folio of Sri Brachata Nadak. This, this was also used by John Malcolm in his sketch of the Sikhs. Unfortunately, when the translations were done, the British forgot about them, the Sikhs probably didn't even know about them at the time. And Dr. Leyden at the time acknowledged that Bajatha Natak was a portion or part of Sri Dasman Sahib. He also states this longer work, which Guru Govind Singh himself is reckoned by the Sikhs to be from the Dasam Pashaka Granth. Clearly, the translator knew the significance of the Granth. After Dr. Leyden, later translations were done by Trump from Germany. And important letters at the National Archives of India shed light onto Trump's translations. He was asked to translate both Guru Granth Sahib and Sri Dasam Granth Sahib. But just a quick description of what took place was that he found Sri Dasam Granth Sahib to be too difficult and he gave up this operation. Essentially he started saying that the Granths were both inferior to the Bible. A bit later on, Max McAuliffe, who many people understand to be a very good Britisher in terms of the work he created, even he could not tra translate the whole Bajata Nadak. So therefore, essentially what I'm trying to say is, the early British period understood the grants in their entirety. It was later on when some of the Shankir came in and some of the debates which derived from the British took hold. I wanted to just conclude by saying manuscripts shed light on Sri Dasa Granth Sahib. The relics provide us with important information as to how Gurbani was transmitted. And the translations from the British are also important to an understanding the Atyas. But most importantly, Sri Dasa Granth Sahib, just like Guru Granth Sahib, has a verifiable history and the same sources which are used to construct the compilation and creation of Guru Granth Sahib are used in the construction of Sri Dasam Granth Sahib as well. And that is a very important point. I'm just going to conclude briefly by stating I've got forthcoming books on Akali Fula Singh and another book on Sri Dasam Granth Sahib as well. For people who want a small introduction, they can see my Sri Dasam Granth Sahib questions and answers book as well. Why Gurjika Khalsa, why Gurjiki Fateh?